So this video is about transaction types. So my previous video, I was talking about the basics of what a transaction is. So I talked about how we have some concurrency problems and problems with uh, atomic operations. So in this one, I'm going to talk about going a bit deeper into which kind of problems that can occur. And I hooked up with uh, uh, Oracle and also with uh, Wikipedia to try to show some of the, the problems that can occur. So when we're doing transactions in Java, we can have um, different kinds of what we call transaction isolation levels. So when, when we're setting up um, any query in, in JDBC, we can set up these different kinds of isolation levels. And the first isolation level is the default one. So it's called transaction read uncommitted. So that allows for some problems that are defined as dirty reads. We have problems called non-repeatable reads and something called phantom reads. So when we're using this one, it's actually the same as having no transactions because there is, there is no transaction control whatsoever here. So if we go into the isolation levels here, um, there are some different uh, things that we can, we can look at here. So one of them is the thing here called dirty reads. These are one of the problems that, that we can have. So you can see these are all here, but uh, the one called serializable, dirty reads are prevented. We see that dirty reads are also prevent, prevented in this one. So let me explain. So when we have dirty reads, it can occur when a transaction is allowed to read data from a row that's modified by another running transaction. So let's say this is one, let's just for uh, sake of simplicity say, this is one user using the system, this is another one. And let's say that the first user is trying to say, select the age from users where user is ID one. So it's taking the first user in the system and trying to query the age, and it says 20 here. So then some time passes and another transaction goes in and says update user set age 21 where ID one, in other words, the person with ID number one or the user with ID number one now is 21 years old. So this transaction actually reads data twice but it gets different results. And this is what we would call dirty read within a transaction. We have another transaction that can interfere with this transaction here. So if the isolation level from trans this transaction one, if these were the only two things going on, if that was said to transaction read committed, it will only be able to read committed data because what we see here is with transaction number two, it actually rolls back its transaction here. So it should never be able to do this uh, if that isolation level was set. So the next thing, um, so this is what we would call uh, dirty reads. So when we read data from another transaction that we shouldn't actually read because this was actually canceled here. Then there is another problem which is called a non-repeatable read. So a non-repeatable read, um, that is when we try to retrieve the same row twice and the values are actually uh, different. So here we can see that we select all the users, we select all columns from users where ID is one. And here, uh, this is updated and actually committed. So when we try to, once again, try to select um, users where ID is equal to one, that the age has uh, changed once again. So the difference here is that in transaction number two, the changes are actually committed before uh, the first transaction is done. And this could be allowed 
But what, sh what we should look at here is in order for the database management system to disallow this, it has to lock a lot more data than it does up here. So up here, the only thing we need to do is we need to, to lock um, the age. So we, can, we only need to lock the age column from this specific user for this transaction to actually uh, be sure that nothing has changed. So that if this transaction tries to change the age, then we should get an error, but we could update something else from this user. For example, we could update his name or his address with no problems. So down here, we would need to lock a lot more in order to not do something like this, because here we are working with that nothing in that row must change. So we need to actually lock the entire row in order for this to actually work. Um, the last form of a uh, problem that can happen is what we would call a random, oh, sorry, a phantom read. Okay, so a phantom read is where we have inserted new rows into the query we are actually doing. So in this case, it says select all uh, columns from users where age is between 10 and 30. So over here, it inserts a new row, and then it does the same thing once again and commits it. So the first query and the second query here will actually reveal different results because it will have one more row in the second transaction or in the second query than in the first one. So the problem here is that we have like a row and then a new row becomes in between. So in order to not being able to do this, we actually need to lock the entire table that's involved in here. So let me just um, try to show that in a more graphical way. So now I have a new uh, paint window here. So let's say that I have all of my users here. This is my uh, table of users. This was the example that was used. And then I have an ID for the user. Let's have a name. And let's say I also have the age. I, I need that to show. And then we have ID number one, two, three, four, and then a lot more here, like 9,972, something like that. So we have a lot of users in here. We have a guy here called Peter. We have a guy called Sven. We have someone here called Lottie. And Louise. Something like that and so forth until some other guy down here. And then we have an age. Let's say this guy is 20 and this guy is 25 and she is a 31 and she is 29 like that. So we have some young people here and um, what we were doing in Wikipedia is we were querying the, the age here. So in this first transaction, we selected the age from users where ID was one. So what happens is that we go in here and then we select ID number one, we select the age. So let me just draw this up in red. So this was from Dirty Read. So what really happens is that in the dirty read, if we go in here, the query number two changes this exact um, column in that exact, exact row. So that means that when we go in here, we can see that the only thing affected is this thing here. So the dirty read only affects this column and only affects this single row. So in order for this to work, in order for us to stop this problem from happening, we have to use the transaction read committed.
So that means that it will not try to read anything that um, has not been committed by other transactions. So we can actually, we'd only need to lock this single uh, field here in our entire table. So let's try to look at the second one, which was the non-repeatable read, where we try to read something. So we read all the rows here and something has changed and being committed. And then we try to read it again. And then it has been changed uh, afterwards. So in that case, if we look at, we can see that we are actually querying this entire row here. So what we need to do in order for that not to happen is that we need to try to lock these entire row here so that is a non, what's it called? Non-repeatable read, couldn't remember the name. Let's just call it non-repeat. So that's a non-repeatable read. So we would have to lock this entire row in order for no one to actually be able to uh, do something with that. And then lastly, we come to the last one, which is called a phantom read, where we actually, we have, we can have something coming in between because we are querying multiple uh, rows at the same time. So if we go in here, that would, for example, be that it would be all of these persons, we're getting all of this data out here. And what really happened was that some row would come in here with uh, some ID 10,001 and then some name, Jane and age 35. She would come in here in between all of this and then we would have the phantom read problem. And the only way the uh, f a database can mitigate this is to actually lock the entire table within the uh, transaction so that while this transaction is going on, we have to lock the entire table in order for no one to actually put in new rows. So you can see now that when we are locking for, when we're looking for dirty reads, we can simply just lock the uh, uh, column here in question and even on the, row, say, the right row, whereas non-repeat, we have to actually look at the entire row and phantom read, we have to lock the entire table. And that brings us back to uh, an important observation here. That means that um, you're paying a price when you're doing transactions. So when the more of a transaction level you're trying to reach, the harder it's actually uh, locking up the entire database. So if we're doing, we could, because why wouldn't we just say transaction serializable and make sure none of this stuff ever goes on and just make it part of the database, just call it the, uh, always transaction database and make everything um, serializable transactions and we have no problems. And the reason for that is that in this case, we are only using, for this example here, we are only actually uh, selecting from one table, but let's say we are selecting from all the tables in our system. And let's say we have a lot of rows or records in our system. So that means we would have to lock up our entire system would be locked down by one transaction. So we wouldn't be able, for example, to have uh, multiple, um, queries at the same time to the database. And if this was data on, for example, a web page or something like this, um, then we could get into some, some serious problems with this because we would then, each user would then wait for the next user's uh, SQL query to finish before the next one could. So scalability is a big problem here. Yeah. So this is basically it for uh, the transaction isolation levels. So whenever you see these transaction isolation levels, you have to think a bit and say, okay, do I really need 
uh, transaction serializable is phantom reads a problem here. And what you can look for is you can try to look for in your code, your SQL code, try to look for how much is really affected by this. When you're doing um, ranges like age between this and this, would it be a problem that a new user just popped in in the middle of this? Would it actually break something in your system? Do you really need this part here to be a transaction? You would have to think hard about that before you choose your transaction isolation level. So, so I would recommend that in each uh, case where you do SQL queries, you think if you really need transactions, if not, this will be the default one. Or if you do, choose the least of isolation levels to optimize performance for your database. Of course, try to look into the future if you can and see if if you really need, uh, if it could be a problem in the future, of course, you would need to, to actually um, do the apl applicable one in that case. So that's it about uh, transaction basics and transaction types. So in my last video on this subject, I'll show you how to actually use the different transaction isolation levels um, in Java and um, when it's needed and when it's not needed with some examples.